I just want to do God's will. The kind of revolution that the world needs is a Christian revolution. If you want a miracle, you've got to expect it to happen. You are the recipients of God's grace and God's blessings, and you rejoice in that reality. Welcome to Life Today. Live, Randy Robinson here. When we talk about addiction, we typically think of, you know, the the, the big things, if you will. Uh, you know, gambling, drugs and alcohol, sex, maybe, you know. But I, there are things that a lot of us face uh, that wouldn't be as overtly destructive. Uh, and it could be addiction to money. It could be addiction to praise from other people, affirmation, things like that. There's a similarity, uh, and so wherever you're at, if you're dealing with something, I, I think today's will benefit you, uh, the conversation. There's some similarities in, in the way that we as human beings um, develop these habits, compulsions, uh, and there's similar ways to, to deal with them, whatever that may be. Now, today we're going to talk to someone who deals with a lot of the, the more destructive addictions, uh, and he has a book out where he's talking about his experience uh, and some of the, the things that have helped many people. The book is called Hope and Addiction. It's written by Andy Partington. And, and Andy is right now in uh, Nicaragua, uh, live with us right now, because he's uh, doing some work down there. He does work in several countries down in South Central America, as, as well as South Africa, um, to to help people in, in some of these life-threatening addictions. Uh, but he's got some great insight that I think will apply to to all of us today and offer you, as the title of the book starts with, hope, because I think that's that's key. So appreciate you guys being here. Hello, Amelia, Judy, everyone out there watching live. Uh, if you are watching live, you're invited to be a part of the conversation. And if you are watching in the replay, we appreciate your kind comments uh, and shares and likes and things like that. Andy, great to have you on Life Today Live. Randy, it's great to be with you. So give everybody a little bit of an idea of what, uh, I, I didn't mention, you, you're leader of what's called Novo Communities. Uh, explain exactly what that is and what it does so we get a little bit of background on, on the work that you're doing. Mm, yep. So Novo Communities is a ministry focused on empowering God's people in, in developing nations um, to come alongside those who are gripped by addiction and, and offer them healing, wholeness, hope. Um, to them, to their families, um, into the wider community. So, so down in Bolivia, we run an, a residential rehabilitation program. Uh, we, we deal with the body, with the mind, with the spirit, with, with someone's relationships. Uh, and off the back of that work, we're now in the posture of really seeking to come alongside those in the developing world, pastors, uh, church leaders, uh, members of the community who just feel a call to, to help those who are who are gripped by addiction. Um, there's a lot of people with the heart, um, but it's hard to do this work well and effectively, and it's hard to do it on an ongoing basis. Mm. You know, it's it's draining stuff. Yeah. So that's really what Nova Communities is all about. How, how in the world did you get, how did you get to where you're at? That's not that's not a normal career <laughs> path. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's stranger than you think. Um, <laughs> the short answer is I was pastoring an international church down in Bolivia and just got really stirred up um, by particularly those who were living on the streets down there. Mm -hmm. So so down in Santa Cruz where we lived, there's open drainage canals and the addicts are down in those canals, in the tunnels, under the intersections. Just really felt stirred up, uh, just felt God calling, calling us as a family to do something. Um, off the back of that, I actually ended up back in the UK leading a, a rehab called Yeldo Manor, an addiction treatment ministry there. Um, but God in his goodness called us back to Bolivia and Nova Communities was born some years later. Yeah, you know, uh, life, we didn't discuss this beforehand, but one of the outreaches of Life Outreach International where I'm at, um, we did work with um, John and Maritza, uh, what is her last name, Hernandez? Um, and they were working in Bolivia. And the, the situation down there, I, is it any better? Because I know it used to be so bad. I mean, children living on the streets often in addiction. What, what's the situation these days? Yeah, it, yeah, it is. It, it continues to be really difficult. And I, and I think this is the this is why the burden, I guess, for us is around the developing world. I mean, it's, it's the burden for anyone gripped by addiction. But 
you know, you see kids growing up on the streets, uh, the children of street addicts who themselves were the children of, children of street addicts. And when we get to the adults, often the compassion levels kind of drop. But actually, for me, it's about saying, hey, wait a second. This was a this was a kid at one point who was just trying to survive and just deal with with yeah. life as, as they find it. So, yeah, that's the that's the case in, in Bolivia, in Nicaragua in Ecuador, you know, in so many places where where you and, and your listeners will have traveled and, and seen poverty up close. Yeah. And, you know, when you do get to the parents, you, you break that cycle, the generational cycle of addiction. So, I mean, there's mm. there's never a bad place to start when when yeah. helping people. Right. Um, yeah, what yeah, what yeah. what type of addictions uh, do you guys deal with mostly? Yeah, with- yeah we we primarily deal with. Um, so there's a there's a. In the process of, of creating cocaine, there's something called pasta base, as they call it in Bolivia, which is an intermediate product. So we deal with a lot of an addiction addiction to that. Hmm. I would actually say, interestingly, alcohol is, is, is as big an issue as anything. And that, again, is where suddenly this becomes a global thing, right? Because right. we all know what alcohol addiction looks like. Um, but as you say, you know, it's it's if you can break into the individual life, the impact goes wide, you know, it goes far out and it also just tumbles down the generations. Mm-hmm. And, and I think for me, that's such a part of the the importance of what is challenging work and is and is often very um, discouraging work. But it but it's the generations to come. Yeah. Uh, what what was a, do you have any idea of the success rate down there with at least with your program? Because I know that could be part of the discouragement. But you got to look on the bright side, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ab- absolutely. So of the guys who who complete our program, we see around 60% okay. today who are doing well. Um, but but I'm, I'm always keen to say we do this um, as a sign of the kingdom. We do it for the glory of God. We do it because because Christ goes after the one, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and leaves the 99. And it's it is discouraging. And I and I. I, I'm always wary when the success rates are too high because I'm like, ah, that's not addiction, you know, mm. unfortunately. And God breaks in and God does amazing things, but it's often a, a hard and a challenging path. And, you know, I think that actually says uh, a lot about your commitment when you don't have the the success rate that would, mm. you know, uh, and make people go, wow. And people hear 60%, they think, oh, man, that's tough. And the reality yeah. is... It is tough, but you know, one of my favorite scriptures, when, when one person comes to Christ, all of heaven rejoices. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, yeah. you, Andy, can make heaven rejoice with just one. Mm. Mm. You Thank know. You, so, yeah, bless you, man. Yeah. Uh, you know. I, I visited a rehab in Florida, which was so inspirational for me, and they talk about rescuing jewels from the devil's junk pile. Yeah. You know, and, and 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 that sense of like, let's celebrate the success and yes. let's recognize. So yeah, thank you. Absolutely no, I mean because that's it's that's 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 tough work, but I think the rewards again are will be great in heaven and mm. and even the ones you get now. Anyway, okay, mm. so let's let's uh, this is the book, Hope and Addiction. So let's get to some of the sort of the principles because I know that these will apply across the board to anyone who may be struggling mm. with any bad compulsive behavior because it doesn't have to be you know cocaine <laughs> or alcohol mm-hmm. there yeah. we have these, these something in us uh that can get us into a cycle that is damaging uh to relationships to ourselves sometimes to our health where do you start when you want to untangle this mess of addiction mm-hmm. there's there's a couple of questions i think we can ask um there's a there's a Scottish proverb which which I love and for me it's so helpful and the, the proverb says this it says they speak of my drinking but never my thirst they speak of my drinking but not my thirst yeah. and, and and in reality I think what we've got to do with addiction is 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 ask questions about the thirst say okay what what's what's driving this behavior so there's two levels to it you know when when we get into let's call them bad habits. Mm-hmm. The brain does this thing where it learns really quickly. Hey, if I do this, I feel like this and and feel like this might not be pleasure. It might be, hey, I just get to forget about things for a while. I, 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 the stress eases off. Mm -hmm. I stop caring about the fact that I don't know where my life is going, you know, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the rewarding nature of, of some, some habits, which easily turn into addictions is such a powerful thing. 
But really what, we, what we've got to be asking ourselves is, why have I got this thirst? And as we look out at society at large, say, why have we got such a thirst for these experiences that, that, that come to dominate us and, and take on a life of their own because they, they start rewiring our brains? You, you talk about uh, the lack of hope uh, and, and for a future and, and the emptiness that people feel inside. Mm. Um, I mean, is, is that, uh, is, is that the problem or is that the symptom of the problem? Mm. You, you, yes, you know, both and, <laughs> yeah. um, and, 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 and definitely. And, and this is the problem. It becomes this cycle, you know, very quickly. What is a, a habit that's not necessarily a very healthy habit? The brain's ability to, to zero in and turn that into addiction is, is incredible. And <laughs> so, from the addiction comes hopelessness and discouragement, disconnection from people. It, it, traumatic experiences often happen to those who are gripped by addiction. But but I do believe underpinning it all, there is, um, and every story is different. You know, you you can't you can talk principles and then you got to listen to individual stories, yeah, right? But yeah. there's there's pain that's that's driving this. You know, no one in their right minds wants to be off their nut the whole time. It, it, it's not what you talk to anyone in addiction. Honestly, they they don't want to be in addiction. They don't want to be drinking constantly. They don't want to be you know pouring vodka on their cereal in the morning. They they don't want to be up late at night watching porn. That's that's not what anyone want wants. But something gets us vulnerable, creates a seedbed. And and really what I talk about in the book is some of those things you touched on them, hopelessness, you know, a sense of really profound emptiness that, that so many feel, trauma and, and adverse childhood experiences. Uh, you know, there's a tremendous correlation between serious addictions and, and those kind of difficult experiences such as abuse, such yeah. as actually even just experiencing divorce, um, such as an experience of neglect as a kid. And then, and then the fourth one I talk about is just disconnection. Post-pandemic, even more than ever, we live these very isolated lives, you know. Um, so it, it both creates addiction and creates addictions that create more of more of that same bad stuff. Yeah, I I love when science catches up with scripture. Uh, mm. And and in in recent years, I've heard a lot about neural pathways. Mm. It'd be the ability of the brain to rewire itself, if you will. Mm. And I go, oh, yeah, renew your mind daily. Mm. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. like God gave us a yeah. shortcut to that uh, you know, yeah, years ago. Yeah. Do you see people able to retrain their brain? Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. You, in 10% of the U.S. population have resolved uh, a substance addiction. Hmm. You know, that's 10% of our, of our peers. So that in and of itself tells you, hey, this is possible. And actually for lots of people, you don't you don't have to go to rehab. You don't need therapy. There's a lot of people who've actually dealt with stuff. Now, the more severe the addiction becomes, the more it's hard to argue that there's a there's an easy solution, right. you know. But absolutely, we can do it. I think the key is safe places to do that in. You know, when the when the brain is is on that track, to give it time to find a new way of working for new positive habits to form. You need to be secure. You need to be protected. Now, that might be going to 90 AA meetings in 90 days and that community. That might be going off to rehab. Um, but but there's something profound that needs to happen. And then alongside that, really, it's saying, OK, but why that pain? Why was I so vulnerable to to addiction? You know, and trying to resolve those underlying issues, which which may be serious. They might feel not so serious, but they've but they've undermined us. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. All right, I want to show people a couple of things real quick because I have a, a question for you, a serious question, but also, mm. uh, yeah. So this is the website, Novo Communities, novocommunities.org. Uh, and so if, if you're you know interested in seeing what they're doing, you, you can check that out. But you've also got this thing that is called Novo Adventures. Uh, and so here's, here's the webpage on that. And let's see if there's a, yeah, there's some motorcycle pictures. All right. So there's a couple things here. There's there's motorcycles. There's looks like a sand, a salt flat or something in the mountains, and there's a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> and and when, you know, I, I remarked to you before we started when I, when I saw that, I thought, geez, motorcycles and cliffs to me don't don't mix. <laughs> but it actually leads to a serious question, and I want you to explain what that is. But when we 
start to remove that thing, that addict, that negative, you know, behavior, the addiction, which has masked our pain or, mm. or filled us on, on a, you know, a daily or regular basis. What do we, I, we, we can't, we can't go empty as people. We have to be filled with something. Uh, yeah. and there are sometimes innocuous things that people fill their lives with, but they still don't provide any fruit. And of course, you know, spiritually, we're going to say, you know, you'd be filled with the spirit. Uh, and, and that's where you derive your, your joy, you know, your peace, your purpose and all those things. What do you, what, what do you see people that get mm. out of addiction filling themselves with? Is yeah. it just some sort of, um, uh, thrill seeking kind of thing sometimes or, or how does, what's the relationship there? I'm just curious. About yeah. That. Yeah. It's a great question. The, the, let me quick detour to answer the question. So <laughs> I know, right. I, I, I talk about <laughs> Batman and Spider-Man in, in the book. Batman does what Batman does because he's got the tools for the job. So it's, and he's got Robin by his side. So there's a very practical approach there. Spider-Man does what Spider-Man does because the spider bites him and he, and he transforms on the inside. And, and I'm a firm believer that it's, it's, in, it's an all of the above approach that we generally need to most problems in life, right? Uh, but, you know, as you look at this, as, as Christians, we tend to focus uh, very much on the spiritual. And, I, and I'm, I'm, for me, that's the X factor. That's the thing. The guys I know who found long-term freedom from addiction have really encountered Christ, have been filled with his spirit. They're, they're in a discipleship journey. You know, they're, 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 they're really going deep with God. But alongside that, there's a bunch of practical things we need to do. And actually, lots of them cross over with our faith. But, you know, you need to go to 12-step meetings. You need to potentially see a counselor. You need to find employment that that, that really uh, is a place where you can serve. You need to volunteer. There's, it's the both end of it, right? So, mm. And again, I think that's where the church is so remarkably well-placed because in the midst of all of that, what's the biggest headline? I think what we need is is quality relationships, you know, and and mm. the close ones, the ones that extend out a bit more, the sense of being part of a tribe and a family. Um, you put all that together, that's your platform for for long-term success, whether it's a small addiction or it's a big one, you know, it's it's the same thing, actually. Sure. You know, we, we need that blend of the Batman and the Spider-Man. Yeah, uh, the, some some kill faster than others, but they're all they all lead to, to death, physically, yeah. spiritually, emotionally, relationally. Mm. So yeah, I mean, time to uproot it. So explain the Novo Adventures and how that fits in. <laughs> yeah, Novo Adventures. So Novo Adventures is a motorcycle tour company that we started uh, to generate funds to support the ministry. So 100% of the profits of that business go to Novo Communities and, and our work in Bolivia. Uh, so we we have guys come down on one week, two week tours and and we explore bolivia on on royal enfield himalayan motorcycles and, and <laughs> bolivia is just so there's two things you get on a trip like that one is 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 bolivia is just this remarkable diverse country you go from jungles to salt flats to the highest capital city in the world to crazy cliff edges and all sorts of cool stuff but alongside that you know the, the groups that come down from the us from the uk from all over um there's such a sense of fellowship on those trips. There's such a sense of, of together going on a, on a, on a journey and, and encouraging one another and, and you know, lifetime friendships are forged. Mm. So for us as a ministry, it's, it's actually, yeah, a, a it's an income generator. Um, we need, we need people to come down for that to be a reality, but actually it's also a tremendous opportunity just to build relationships with supporters and, and make new friends. Oh, that's a little crazy off the hook in a great way. All right, noblecommunities.org <laughs> is the website. Come on down, Randy. Come on down. <laughs> yeah. So if you <laughs> if you are interested, you know someone who might be interested. This is not like a, a treatment trip, right? This is, mm, mm, this mm, is mm. no, no. It's common. Just have fun. Just have a great time. Okay, and meet yeah. some meet some great people. And you know, God calls you into it, uh, the, to to help in in greater ways than then he'll do that. Here's my question. Mm. Back to the addiction. For anyone who is struggling with that addiction what, what, from one extreme to the, just a you know a bad habit again mm. all need to be dealt with you know yeah. uh some may require you know some some can be cast out quickly some need a little prayer and fasting right mm. um what does that person need to hear today mm. Mm. here would be my the one-liner right the one-liner for me would be 
no one can do it for you, but you can't do it alone. Mm. No one can do it for you. You can't do it alone. And and actually, um, you know, there's steps that that we can take to to move forward. You know, and, and maybe we've taken them 50 times before, and we're, and we're discouraged. But you know what? It's picking up the phone. It's going to a 12 step meeting. It's reaching out to a friend. It's it's doing something. But again, it's community. So you can't do it alone. You know, and, and it's really saying how can you put yourself in the midst of the kind of people who are going to support you, whether it's dealing with that bad habit and just putting it to bed once and for all and keeping it there, or whether it's really facing into something that's just really destroying your, your life in, in short order. No one can do it forward for you, but, but you can't do this alone. You, you need people. Am I correct in, in some of the conversations I've had with others that, that in the beginning, I mean, it's almost an hour by hour, certainly a day by day effort. Uh, and it, it feels hardest oftentimes early on, but mm. the more you develop that, and, and there's neurological things to back this up too, yeah. uh, that it becomes easier. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's, you know, recovery doesn't go up in a straight line. I, I'm a firm believer you 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 do this, right? And so are there going to be a year 10 of your recovery? Are there going to be moments of, of, of real difficulty? Yes, there are. But but as you talk to people who are in long term recovery, yeah, it it does it does get easier, yeah. and 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 therefore as you build one day at a time, yeah, you know yeah. you get to a place where you start to see the rewards of your recovery. You know you start to that 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 glimmer of hope that you had starts to have good foundation. You know and and and, and life grows and life develops. Um, yeah, very good. So, all right. If someone wants to contact you, I'm guessing the website's the best place, NovaCommunities.org. Website, Facebook, Instagram, um, however. Yeah, but but the website, we've got a little contact form on there. So that's a super easy way for folks to be in touch. Great. I appreciate, I appreciate the work that you're doing. And I love that you have fun in, in as well, you know? So, yeah, that, yeah I mean, that, that's, that's great. Anything you want to add? It's the heart of God, right? It's the heart of God. I think so, you know? I, I really do. I mean, he made mm. a beautiful earth for us to enjoy. I mean, mm. he's, he's pretty creative, if you ask me. But uh, anything you want to add before I let you go? I appreciate you doing this today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate all you guys out there watching. If you know somebody that's struggling, needs a little hope, look, we're not going to uh, snow you. you, you, you I'm I wanted to say a word. I can't say on the air. We're going to tell you the truth. It will be difficult, but you can do it. You can be one of the 60%, right? There is hope. And if you need a little kickstart, you can check out Andy's book called Hope for Addiction. It's available wherever you get books. looks just like this. Uh, and I, I think you can read some scripture that will that'll tell you that, that all things are possible with, with God. And mm. recovery from addiction is one of them. So there is hope for you. Hit that share button if somebody needs to hear this message today. And if you haven't liked, followed, or subscribed, please do that. You'll get notifications of more good interviews. Appreciate you guys being here. We'll see you again next time here on Life Today Live. Above all that I can ask.